What's going on guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update, hope everyone's doing well and let's kick it off. So before we dive into some crypto news, just a quick fun fact and I'm sure many already know, we do have a 2024 solar eclipse taking place on April 8th. I'm sure everybody knows the movie Leave the World Behind that was, I believe, directed or backed by Barack Obama. It's a crazy movie. I just pray that nothing like that ever happens, even over the coming decade. I feel like over the past two years, there's been a bigger narrative or just a bigger push. Maybe it's just me reading articles, but discussing blackouts, geostorms, all types of things. And then even that recent hack with China, um, what was it, like a carrier freight, and it was really similar to the movie. And again, we have no idea what's going to happen, probably nothing, but just sharing. All we get is reports from the media, you don't know who to trust at this point. So next up, we had the total crypto market cap, just comparing the monthly price chart really quick before we dive into some recent news. So we can see the monthly RSI back in 2016 during the bull run, pure 70 and overbought, where momentum is at a high. When it's at a high, it doesn't mean that it's going to top right there, as you can see right there. This was the high of the RSI, it later did go higher, provided the RSI maintained above 70 and overbought. We can also see we had a similar run-up in 2020 during the bull run for the altcoin market, creating another all-time high price. So we are in a very similar position today, just looking at the big picture, the monthly price chart, where RSI currently is around 73.8. So just pointing out the big picture view of the monthly price chart, we've shared in previous videos the Bitcoin history and looking at multiple cups of the monthly RSI, bear market, bull run, bear market, bull run, and we're looking really similar today. Next up, super quick, we are definitely living in the Truman Show. So shared by Crypto Law, we have SEC Gov plans to seek $2 billion in remedies from Ripple for $700 million in institutional sales of XRP to qualified investors. No fraud nor any harm to those investors was alleged, just failure to register. What about for the retail investors who suffered $15 billion in losses from the SEC's failed embodiment theory? Nothing. And on what planet is this okay? So this is absolutely insane. I'm not going to read all the commentary from Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, and Stuart Alderati, but definitely check it out if you haven't already. It's just a complete joke. And like King Solomon says, the price for regulatory clarity? $2 billion. I'm no legal expert, so I'm keeping tabs on the commentary to better understand these scenarios from Jeremy Hogan, James Filan, John Deaton, I think Fred, and I'm forgetting a few names, so apologies. But we have a bunch of great legal experts in the XRP community. I'm going to keep tabs on Stuart Eldorati specifically as the chief legal officer for Ripple. Next up, shared by Hodor. So there's been a lot of talk about a canary network for the XRP ledger. I think this would be really cool. So it potentially creates value for the XRP community out of thin air, and it reduces the risk of new amendments to the main chain. Now, for a canary network, it is essentially a test network with real value. So instead of just a test net, there's a canary network and then the main net. So this would be really, really cool in the future, something to keep tabs on. Next up, so yesterday I was looking at the growth or the stats for the internet service market size and looking at the billions of dollars they're projecting by 2028. And you can also find this stat right online. Internet users are expected to rise by 47% from 5.35 billion to 7.9 billion by 2029. So in terms of Web3 users today, we're not even at 1 billion. I believe the last estimate I saw for Web3 users today is around 300 million. During the peak of the bull run last cycle, we are just over 400 million. And I've shared this before by Visual Capitalist, visualizing the US GDP by industry. So this is only the US looking at different industry sectors. So business services, manufacturing, healthcare, finance, insurance, wholesale, all types of things. So this is only the US, but right on the IMF data mapper, we can see the global GDP is over 109 trillion. So I consider this because the WEF, BCG, other firms are basically estimating that 10% of global GDP will be tokenized by 2030. So it is interesting to assume 10% of global GDP, which is a huge sum. It also lines up with even Ripple and Medico's prediction for the crypto custody market expected to reach $10 trillion by 2030. Now, 10% of global GDP would be a big deal. Casper Lab CEO has pointed out that 5 to 9% of global GDP is just accounting for if something is trustworthy, and blockchain with an audit trail can do that. Now, looking at the total crypto market cap, I thought this was interesting. We have shared this before, but super quick. So just drawing a fib from last cycle high to the cycle low and looking where we're at per the Fibonacci extensions. We came up to the 3618 perfectly, backtested the 1618, and topped out at the 4.236. So absolutely beautiful. And this bear market came back and backtested almost like a double bottom with candle bodies on the 100% Fibonacci retracement. 
What's even cooler is looking at this recent cycle and drawing a Fibonacci retracement using the cycle high of last cycle to the cycle low for this bear market. Today we're right around the 786, so just looking at these extensions. I'll be a happy camper at all-time highs whether it's 3.6, 4.4, .4, 5Trillion or beyond, but what's interesting is $10 trillion like Medico and Ripple shared is a 4.236. The same Fibonacci extension that we reached last cycle, so how long does it take? Does it take two years? Does it take five years? Who knows? And another important point for the future of tokenized assets is how much of this will be interoperating with public chains even in a hybrid instance. We know the guy, I believe his name is Dan over at Aberdeen, they have over 600 billion US dollars in AUM. I know it's different if you look at pounds, but that's a big deal and they've already tokenized at least 20 billion dollars of their funds. So these asset managers, even BlackRock building on Ethereum, are setting these funds up for tokenization. We just need the liquidity to get there. So the bridges are being built. Next up, for Hedera, we have Harvard Blockchains Club. Thrilled to unveil our sponsor, Hedera, for Harvard Blockchain Conference 2024. So this will be taking place April 13th to the 14th. Also saw that Casper Network will be at Paris Blockchain Week April 11th with AWS, KeyRock, a few groups down below, including Tim Draper as a speaker. The last Bitcoin price prediction that I saw Tim Draper make was $250,000 for Bitcoin. That's right at the 4.236. So consider me super skeptical, but hey, anything's possible. I also saw this, BlockWork sharing. BlackRock should have just stuck with Bitcoin. BlackRock has learned the hard way just how silly crypto can be in comparison to Bitcoin. Working with digital assets was a breeze when all BlackRock's fund managers had to do was max bid Bitcoin on Coinbase Pro on behalf of ETF shareholders. However, things changed when they opted to launch a $100 million money market fund that exists entirely on Ethereum. It only took minutes for crypto Twitter to name an Ethereum address tied to the fund and even less time for the wallet to be drowned in low quality meme coins and NFTs, most of which are valued at zero. Even Vitalik Buterin's most well-known wallet contains nearly 2,000 tokens, most of them worthless, and more than 60,000 NFTs thrown in his direction. Now Lehman Baird, co-founder of Hedera, when we designed the Hedera network, we wanted to do things differently for Web3. The issue of receiving unwanted tokens is an unfortunate yet expected result of the lack of inflow controls for wallets and accounts on most public blockchains. Ethereum, for actual accounts and contracts, it's structured a bit differently. A lot of these newer L1s that weren't created or launched in you know, 2014, 2015 have built on the shoulders of giants. So again, I believe Ethereum is here to stay, but there will be better technology in the future. For tokenization to reach its full potential, users must have the ability to control the limits of how they want to interact with their respective network. That's why for Hedera, they've implemented token associations and receiver signature capabilities, providing secure and flexible safeguards against unwanted spam and crypto dusting attacks for both enterprises and individuals alike. And there are a bunch of layer ones that have new and improved features learning from Ethereum. So Meta Parlacar, C2 of Casper Labs. Did you know that Casper Network is resistant to dusting attacks? The account model and named keys equals proof of acceptance. Only authorized keys with sufficient weight can store data in the account. Next up, shared by Anders, Ripple the company is hiring a senior manager of business development for institutional DeFi in New York. The job description specifically mentions leveraging the XRP ledger and I suppose the AMM will be a critical piece to their institutional DeFi solutions. And like he says, institutional DeFi will likely become a multi-trillion dollar market. We've gone over the blogs even on Ripple's website going over DeFi and regulation and KYC. It's a pain in the butt, but for institutions to actually come in and use DeFi or leverage DeFi to its full capability, it has to be regulated unfortunately. But when there are clear guidelines and the companies are comfortable entering, they know what they can do and what they can't do, there's going to be a lot more money that flows. Shared by Rath Kahneman, Ripple cited a few times in the new MasterCard report, the future of remittances in Latin America, digitalization, multiple rails, and the strategic role of partnerships. And remember, Ripple the company is in MasterCard's ecosystem exploring CBDCs, Hong Kong, Brazil, Australia, US, England, and as you scroll down, we can see Ripple alongside a few organizations all the way down here, including Consensus and Fireblocks. So we have Ripple right there. And you know what's interesting that I just realized? We talked about the solar eclipse taking place on April 8th, and we have Tranglo using XRP in payment flows today. It's official. EU's or the European Union's instant payments regulation is coming into effect starting April 8th. Also, Cowboy Crypto is an absolute must-follow if you want to follow along for the corruption of Gary Gensler and the SEC. 
We have a bunch to share in future videos, but we're going to finish up with this, and this is super important, guys. If you've ever known John Deaton, he's an awesome guy. He is running for Senate, so anybody that can support him, you can at johndeatonforsenate.com slash donate. This man's story is absolutely insane. It is super inspiring. I have a huge amount of respect for him and everything he's done and continues to do for the XRP community. Hey everybody, John Deaton here, please. We got one week to go for our deadline to get a million dollars before the end of the quarter. Go to johndeatonforsenate.com, contribute whatever you can, $25, $50, $100, whatever you can afford. Send a message to Washington and Elizabeth Warren. The people want that seat back. So I'll be linking this in the top of the YouTube video description. There's no pressure. You don't have to donate. But anybody that does, donate directly to John's campaign. Huge thank you. If each person put $10 or even $25, bucks, I think they could get to the goal by the end of the month. And I'm rooting for John. He's been one of the biggest voices in the XRP community for years, going head-to-head -head with the SEC. And generally, I'm not a fan of politics and politicians. I think there's a lot of bad people, but there's also really good people out there. And I think John Deaton would make a great addition. Thanks so much for watching guys and huge thank you to all that hit the like button and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources and discounts, I'll catch you in the next one.